So uh, lots to cover today. Uh, before uh, we get into uh, the heart of the show, Daniel, the bacon of the show, the bacon the, of the, the show. ham steak of the show. Uh, what I want to do is look thick explosion trade. Uh, we're going to talk meat and potato stocks here in a second. Okay, we've got tick explosion trade, uh, which we covered a little bit ago. Uh, uh, has made its way back into, like it's happening most every day in the markets. I want to talk about that in a little bit. I want to cover uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum. Uh, we're going to make notes here because there's a lot I want to cover uh, chart-wise. Uh, why the S&Ps could be another short happening again today. Presented itself on um, on Wednesday as well. But before we do that, I've got to peel back the onion. I, a lot of food metaphors here to start the show. I've got to peel back the onion on on the on everything that we've been talking about the show before the show was fantastic so it started with uh something about nicholas cage and i don't even know how we random got, comment i don't even know how we got to <laughs> you Nick said nicholas cage yeah like nicholas cage is the best actor of our time right like he's the most interesting actor of our time more, most interesting most right? interesting actor is what i said and then that led to a discussion between alex and hunter i believe alex goes have you guys seen the trailer for this movie pig and it's like i've never even heard of this movie and so we start watching the trailer and okay, it looks interesting. I don't know what the hell that's about. It looks scary and dark, but uh, I don't know what this particular movie is about. But then that led me to say, I think Nicolas Cage is the Samuel L. Jackson of our time. And Samuel L. Jackson does like 20, 30 movies a year. It doesn't matter if there's COVID, he's doing 20 or 30 movies a year. Oh, and, and if you ask him about it, which he was in an interview once, he goes, I'm an actor. I got to apply my trade. I always want to be working. And I think, like, mm. what were some other movies, Alex, that you were mentioning Nick Cage is in? Like, what was the one that you said really sucked? He was, in, like, in a fun house? Yeah, um, I don't know. It's a recent movie. It's on Amazon Prime. It was bad, though. A couple of his good ones are, like, those Disney ones, National Treasure. Yeah, I, I like those. That one. Oh, I, I, I sorry, like oh, those histories about the Constitution. Oh, and that's how it started. Yo, Hunter has a picture of, of the, the first, Street, meeting, yes, of, first meeting of Wall Street, which then led to, oh, I know that story because of National Treasure. From, from Wall and Broad. <laughs> the other street is Broad. That's Wall and Broad. Yeah, and, yeah. Which then led to a discussion of Nicolas Cage is the greatest actor of all time. And then Don chimed in with, oh, this is a great movie. I was rooting, I was rooting for Bacon the entire show. <laughs> here we are. Yeah, and here, and here we are, which, by the way. Wait a minute. You, you, you said that like it's a bad <laughs> No, I'm, sure. I'm on Team Bacon. I'm, I'm absolutely okay. on Team Bacon. Right, but which then led me to what I was really going to start the show with. Daniel, look at your screen. So this is uh, by tweet. Like there's software out here uh, in a company. I think it's called ravereviews.org. And you know they're serious because it's .org. It's not .com. Yeah. It's .org. This is the NPR of fast food rating. Like this is, uh, this, which is going to make Don have a joke here. You Don, chime in with your joke anytime you want about NPR. So what do you mean it's fake news then, Tim? No, this is real news. And here's the, here's the big takeaway of the most hated fast food brands. Canadians hate Orange Julius. And I want to know, and I, and I know <laughs> I, why. I respect that. that. I mean, I don't. Oh, wh why? I no. Orange Julius is the greatest drink known to man after coffee. And here's the thing. I used to go to the Berkshire Mall. Why missing Pennsylvania? And so that's where I grew up. It's where, you know, your mom drops you off at the mall, hang out with your friends. That was the 90s thing to do, right? And it was Orange Julius, man. It was the greatest <laughs> drink in the history of drinks. In fact, they take the little powder. That I, hell, if I know what they're mixing it in with, if it was real orange juice or not. A lot of water eventually. And so Orange Julius is the greatest drink known to man. But why do Canadians hate it? Why would you? What's the point? Why? What is in an Orange Julius that says, no, we'd rather go to Tim Hortons? Timmy H. Well, first off, Timmy H is, is fantastic, right? I do like the Tim Hortons. And secondly, looking at our global global map here, it does say also Mexico hates Taco Bell. Which well, uh, yeah, I because they know what real Mexican oh, food is. They, they know what real Mexican food is. <laughs> second. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, also, let's, also let's address Russia that. Starbucks? Yeah, oh, wait, wait. Colombian coffee, where Juan Valdez and, and his donkey uh, used to roam. Uh, they it, hate they hate Starbucks. That now this is interesting. True. That is interesting. Yeah, like the the people that give us coffee. A lot of coffee comes from. There's two types of coffee beans, Daniel. There's Arabica, yeah. uh, which come from the high mountainous regions found in Colombia, and then there's Robusto, where the Robusto bean is found over in uh, like the Sumatra area of the Indonesia. World. Indonesia, thank you. And so interesting that Starbucks is hated. Um, 
by Colombians who know real coffee. Like the Mexicans who know real Mexican food. <laughs> that's, that's my favorite. Go Mexican figure. Food. Okay, well, then why does China hate Starbucks? They, they, they don't like the marketing. They just like the, the actual that's true. What's product the, itself. What has Wendy's done to Australia? Yeah, what, what's, <laughs> what's South <laughs> Africa? Yeah, what's Australia's problem with Wendy's? What's, like, so, what's South Africa's <laughs> problem with Wendy's? They got the same thing. That KFC, they hate them. <laughs> like this map. I that's say we screw funny. the show and we address. <laughs> commit. We address. The whole entire map here, like KFC, though, is clearly the world's most hated Apparently, brand of yeah. fast food. Most of South America and South Africa both hate Wendy's and KFC. This is interesting. That this map, by the way, you can find everything we're talking about here this week's stock of the market lovers in the show notes. So the show notes, the only place to find them are, is on our YouTube channel. Which, ironically enough, it doesn't help you. I have linked to in the show notes. So the only way to get the show notes, I realized when I typed that, that in that's there. That, you know that circular reasoning, right? Yes, 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 yeah. Keep people clicking longer. And, and, I want to know. Tangent. Uh, yeah, I, I want to know, Tim, when, when, when you went to the mall in junior high or in high yeah. school in Pennsylvania in your husky jeans. Oh yeah. What oh what God. else? What else did you have besides the orange Arby's. Julius? Arby's. Ar now, Arby's. I did like Arby's growing up. Arby's by the way, I don't see Arby's on this map. Arby's is below. They've actually uh, expanded I, their menu quite a I, bit. Oh, and it's that, that time of year that, that Arby's will come out with venison. It's that time of the year that Arby's it's will deer season. It is deer season. Well, it's coming up. It's and not, every year not quite there yet. Arby's releases their venison sandwich, but I don't see Arby's on this map at all, which tells me that Arby's is the most beloved fast food brand in the universe. <laughs> it, it does seem a whole lot like this map is dominated by the unholy Pepsi. The big one, the big one. Yeah, you don't see Taco Bell. What, 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 what are the curly, the curly Q fries, right? That's yeah. the Arby. Those are mm -hmm. fantastic. That's a 1993. No, I, I didn't have those. I had the curly fries and the horsey sauce. Is that a called horsey sauce? Horsey sauce. Horse, yeah. yeah. Because it's not too strong of the yeah. horseradish. It's yeah. a little bit diluted. It's yeah. It's got an Arby's. Oh, Arby's gosh. sauce is like a like a vinegary barbecue sauce. Uh, right? I like their Arby's sauce. Man, I got some good Arby's memories there. And so listen. I took my, I took my granddaughters to Wendy's last uh, Saturday. And That's I said, time. if you eat all your lunch, you get a treat at and so, of course, they finished it. It was frosty time, which yes. they didn't know was coming. I sat them down in front of them, and they were all excited. They said, wow, what is that? I said, they call it a frosty. And the little one, three and a half years old, takes a bite of it and said, I call it ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. Wow. Dress it up how you want to, but out of the mouths of babes, it is. Right, exactly. Yeah, I, I, wonder, I wonder how much they paid the marketing guy to, or girl to come up with the term frost, frosty. Good question. Yeah. yeah. So now. So we're back to Nicolas Cage here for a second. Oh, God. So Don's going on a bacon, uh, not, well, uh, a pork tangent. Is this it? No, this is not it. Don's going on a pork tangent. <laughs> and so, which then led me to say that, uh, well, Don, Don said if, if uh, bacon was universally beloved, there'd be no war in the world. I'm, I'm paraphrasing mm -hmm. Don here. And I said, interesting note, when I was, um, I said in, over in the Middle East, they have beef bacon, which just pause on that for a second. And someone said, well, how do you know that? And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I went to the grossest restaurant on earth, Subway on Al-Assad in Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> I've got firsthand knowledge of this beef bacon. And so if you want to figure out, like, because we had the discussion last week, the grossest restaurants in America are Subways, right? Oh. And, and so now I want, you to, I want you to imagine the Subway on an, on an American military base in Iraq. <laughs> And like, hey, I'll get that sandwich with bacon. I could use some bacon. It is not bacon, sir. It is beef bacon. What the hell's that? Beef strips. I took it. So anyway, yes, I, I'm not 100. They have those at Taco Bell. They're called oh, fajita meat. But I will. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you this: the best, my favorite form of barbecue, done right. Like not 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 fast food barbecue or Dickies or whatever. That's mine. No, it's um. It's not brisket. It's dinosaur beef ribs. Like these big beef ribs. They look, they, they're giant. When they mm. are smoked to perfection, mm, my gosh, that is the best form of barbecue. But look, I, 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 this is not even where I wanted to start the show. I wanted to start the show with what we're about Baby back do. ribs? No, no, no. no. These, I, if you gave me a choice between pork ribs and beef ribs, it's beef ribs 
every day of the week. Really? Oh my gosh, you your world will change. I need some better beef ribs. Where are you yeah, getting and, good beef ribs? Oh, uh, Smoke Sessions Barbecue, Roy City Top Fifty Barbecue Joint. Uh, as as what's it called? Uh, uh, smoke uh, Roy uh, Smoke Sessions. Smoke Sessions. Yeah, in Roy City. So um, that's where we almost bought a house. Smoke Sessions Barbecue, Top Fifty Brisket in Texas. Oh, uh, Josh Sessions. You need to try uh, Wangus beef ribs. What? Who? Wagyu. And oh. Angus. Wangus. It's called Wang. It's Wangus. Wow. Wangus beef. Uh, don't can't keep it clean, Tim. Did you make this I, uh, Tim, <laughs> this is I can see thing. Tim's dirty mind starting to, you know. <laughs> where? His eyes roll. We're going to keep the show clean. So he can't, I'm just going to ask you where the Wangus is on the couch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, well done. Not bad. That was acceptable. Hey, Zach, with that. We don't, we don't have to edit that out. Yeah, that was good. good. That was good. Can you hear this? This is where I wanted to start the show. San Diego Superchargers fight song? Oh, yeah. Keep talking. You got to keep talking. No, no, over there's, there's, no, there's no copyright. Oh, okay. No, Can this is this is free use. Okay. So, oh, what is it? What is this? <laughs> no, don't Here do comes that. the advertising. Yeah, right? Have you ever heard this? I can't hear it. That's better. Yes. Have you ever heard this? No. <laughs> this is like the best fight song ever next to E-A-G-L-E-S. This has got words. I guess that would, by the way, I guess that would necessitate that you're actually watching the Chargers to be able to hear that song. That's this, true. this song is in the show notes. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was, sure I, I was uh, talking to my uh, father yesterday. And uh, he just sounded agitated, like more agitated than an old man should sound, right? And I'm like, Dad, what's got you down? You've been watching Fox News again? <laughs> and, uh, and he goes, as a matter of fact, I was. <laughs> <I'm> like, <"Dude." laughs> have you seen that comedian that does a whole skit on his dad watching Fox News? No, so I have he not. Just, it just gets him mad. He just yeah, he watches it to get mad before he goes to bed. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> Dad, you sound pissed off. He goes, I shouldn't watch the politics, and I'm like, you shouldn't. He goes, but it's your mother. She she makes me turn it on, and I'm like, I'm like, Mom, Mom. I'm like, so Mom. we can get mad together. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> Jesus, and I'm like, this we need we need happy stuff, and so uh, Remy is going to a dance with uh, Tanya, and so this Saturday, like, there's a oh. mother or son dance or something oh, in our cool. town, and uh, Tanya goes, I'm taking Remy, and Remy's all jazzed. I don't like Remy. You're gonna dance. He goes, I'm gonna dance, and I'm like, you want to dance to this? And I and I don't. This is how I start playing. He goes, that's my new favorite song. <laughs> we, we, we played this song because he kept asking for it on the car ride in to uh, daycare, which is uh, 45 minutes to an hour, depending upon traffic. We listened to this song for 45 minutes to an hour again, and again. Wow. And I'm like, did this, you tell him it's not the Eagles? I fight I, song. He he doesn't. <laughs> he, 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 this kid is is Dan. Like all he wants to do is dance and be happy, and it makes me happy too. But so then I got to thinking, like, so I um, Danny knows this about me. So on the desk in the office, I've got candles, and I I like to work by setting the mood. Like I like to be. Uh, we had to stop you from from burning incense. That was they, yeah. They, they're not the they're not even really supposed to uh, burn candles. No, they don't the want office, you burning candles. But 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 Tina's really nice. She kind of gave a wink and a nod and said, "Just don't. I don't want to know." Yeah, they that. would come up here yeah. and do it. Do the uh, do the inspections, you know, for the yeah. building. And like, is that a candle on your desk? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just that's decoration. That's we never we yeah. never light it. It's right. a <laughs> So then I was like, you know Dan, what? Do, Dan, do you have to drop rose petals from the front door? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Yep. We, Tim, Tim's got to get his, you know, his uh, moisturizing cream. But the whole, but the whole <laughs> world is just angry. So I'm, I'm reading, uh, I'm, I'm perusing some social media uh, in the morning here. And, um, and like yesterday they tied down. Uh, some dude on a jet blue flight, he was choking a flight attendant and, and they had a, they had to calm his ass down by tying him up with neckties. And first off, who's wearing neckties? Uh, secondly, uh, they had to like strap it, I think belts and neckties. And I'm like, the world has forgotten how to behave. Like, oh, yeah, like, like yep. the world is agitated. Yep. And look, if you want to get agitated, let's, let's talk about uh, a junior high volleyball game going to 10 o'clock at night. Let's talk about that. <laughs> Because I could, because I have suffered through this now for four weeks in a row. Danny, the junior high that Reagan Bull goes to has three. Well, I don't know what's up with Texas. It's junior high sports. Hey, hey, 
It's sports. Yeah, it's sports in Texas. Stupid. stupid. Three volleyball teams for the seventh grade. Three volleyball teams for the seventh grade. And every school has it. They start playing at 5.30. I swear to you, the A team didn't finish up till 10. Like, it's junior freaking high. And it's all a big scam because you got to buy tickets to these things where I went to school. Like, they just wanted parents to show the hell up and support their kids. So you just, they'd let anybody in, right? And so these school charges you. They all charge you ticket money, but it's not the tickets. It's the fees. They have fees for these guys. Gosh darn tickets. Texas school sports are the biggest scam in American history. It goes, who's that guy Don't who robbed everybody? you go to Ticketmaster to get them? That's what I'm saying, dude. Like, they've got these – it's all a kickback wow. thing. Who's the guy? Bernie Madoff, Texas high school sports, and then uh, John Stump from Wells Fargo. The biggest scams in American history. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And so, anyway, like, how do you calm down? And I'm like, I'm going to share my secret of how I calm down. Now, listen. This is an unbelievable resource, my friends. Okay? What I'm about to show you is free. And it's how I set the mood now when I want to write. Because they won't let you take candles into the gym. No, they won't let you take candles into the gym. <laughs> so I'm going to show you this. It's called Calmed by Nature. Okay? This little site, Calmed by Nature. And they do music on YouTube better than anybody. Okay? They, they get into it. Like they role play the music. And I'm all for that. So I like Christmas, right? And so you can start. Like when it's pumpkin latte season, it's almost Christmas season. Pumpkin. Yeah, I got my flannel on. Look, I dressed like a pumpkin it's, latte today. It's very like fall. Like, it, like when it's not 100 degrees in Texas, it means it's fall. Yeah, and so yeah. fall is here. It was actually cool today coming in. It was about 80. Now yeah. listen, listen, you can actually, <laughs> you actually get the sense that you're going into a coffee shop and it's snowing. How can you be pissed at this? Hear that? Like it's like you just want. Oh, uh, you got to keep talking over it because that no, is trade. This is all copyright. Okay. okay. Yeah, they're not. They're not paying. These people are not paying. I think, I think Silent I, Nights copyright free. I think I watched this channel in December. I remember this room. I've seen this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, I'll be tell you about the good folks at Calm by Nature. So you can click the Calm by Nature, and they just released a brand new video, right? Rainy night coffee shop for the fall. <laughs> Hold on to Eight. your hats. <laughs> no, no, this is last year's. But look at the numbers on this, Danny. Ten million people have watched ads, listening. The world needs this. This is. Free, calm by nature. Calm by nature, man. Not naughty by nature. I'm naughty by nature, but um, that's ninety years. So you could grind your own Colombian coffee. And yes. Watch this at home. Yes. And you don't have to go to Starbucks. Yes, yes, yes. So listen, stock nerds and market lovers. If you look, trading, trading can be stressful, right? Sure and, can. And so uh, there is an uh, the reason why I talk about like I mentioned IPO Club that you can find on Twitter. Like if you just Find me on Twitter. We want to join the folks in IPO Club. Sometimes you can feel a little, not stress, it might be too strong of a word, but there's a lot of chatter about stocks and stuff. And the market can be stressful, right? And I think perspective helps. I think, uh, uh, I think just be having the tools at your disposal to, uh, to facilitate clear thinking when the market is, market is happening, I think helps. And so you can find that link in the show notes too, by the way. But look, look at this chart here of the S. They're just gyrating. And like yesterday, they, you know, I, I had a discussion with somebody in IPO Club uh, the other day. Like, hey, why two closes above the 21? So here's the 21 exponential moving average. And uh, Danny, I didn't even get to the vegan cheesesteak. Remind me, I want to talk about that. Okay. So, oh, God. Uh, well, <laughs> 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 It's bacon free, so Don doesn't want to hear about it. That's right. We'll get to that in a moment. But now, look, there's a 21 exponential moving average. And I was asked, hey, why, why two clothes above the 21? And because I was sick of getting burned by one close above the 21. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, it, this actually came, this rule, I don't, it, it came from discussion with people. And I can't remember if it was at a trade show or what. But um, yesterday, they kind of got you, right? They're like, okay, we're going to take this thing over the 21. And we're going to the moon, right? And like this is the S and P's on daily chart, and you can see here that they're just keeping it right under the twenty-one. Now I don't know where it closes. I don't know what happens next week. Next week's end of quarter. There's some open. In you, you can look at open interest to figure out where they want to close this thing potentially. But this this right here isn't the most bullish of patterns. Now, if this pennant was forming 
say up here just below recent highs, that super bullish, like continuation pattern, look for that, look for them to yank it back and jerk it higher. I'm not so sure with this right now. And um, you could, you, you, the 21 is like the predominant way to short the market, like anything really. But when you're like right up above, like right against it, you place your short. Like you don't want to shorten the hole. You don't want to short down here. And, I, and that sounds, well, of course you don't want to short down here. It went back up higher. So no, no. You, like if you're looking for moments in time to like, where would I take a short? Because shorting looks sexy, right? People watch the movie, The Big Short. They don't realize that guy almost bankrupted his firm because he was in that trade for a very long time. Till it worked. Yeah, till it worked. Like they call that being early, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between the trade work, you know, what's the difference between the trade working out and uh, we're going back or being early, you know, just being early. Um, th this is where you would take your shot. Well, how do you know you're wrong? You know, you could say it's really strong close over the 21 or two close above the 21. This is where you would do it. And, and look, they've taken it down here to the five and the eight. That's a positive. I think that's a, a feather, a feather in the bull's caps here, but it's interesting that um, what you want to, what I think you want to pay attention to, I, I can show you this S and P chart, okay? But I, I, what I think is interesting are the next three things I'm going to show you, okay? See how I did this, Daniel? I was talking fast. I was talking bacon. We talked with age, and now like I'm into the knowledge. Like I got, I got him into the ten. Got a couple people. They're, they're, they're. Some people hate listening to me talk. By the way, I mean they. Oh yes, yeah, Zach. They hate <laughs> listening to me you? talk. No. But they're like, get to the stocks, Tim. And I'm like. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. But they keep listening. They keep listening because they want to be even more angry. It's the Fox. It's my dad watching Fox News, right? Give me more, Hannity. <laughs> Just pad. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Get through Laura Ingram. <laughs> that always sounds. I don't know, but he was not. He, oh, you speaking of my father. I love my dad. And uh, was he not? When they took the Bill O'Reilly off the air, he was unsure of the Tucker. But now he's got a Tucker love crush. Yep, I man think, crush. I think, big, man. I'm pretty <laughs> sure he's got a Tucker love crush. You know, like he's that goofy guy that used to wear the bow ties. I like him. <laughs> anyway. Not so bad. Yeah, I don't even think if I said, "Hey, Dad, tell me who, um, oh, Cooper Anderson Cooper is." Yeah. Huh? <laughs> huh? Yeah, tell me who Rachel Mat Rachel Maddow is. You that's just, the person you're just, you're just trying to piss him off. No, that he knows who Rachel Maddow is because that's, that's sure because that's the person they make fun of on Fox News. Right, like right, he right, only right. he only knows the other hosts from what they're. So he's never actually watched. Her. I don't think he knows where that channel is. <laughs> right. Like if he, okay, that's a good question. What Probably hasn't blocked. Yeah. yeah, that'd be a tough one. Yeah. 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 So anyway, but uh, they, they drink my my parents drink. Their, they they're now at the age where they. My dad gets my mom coffee, and they bring he brings it to the bed. There's a there's a service now that brings coffee to the bedroom. It's called my dad, and so he says my mom is the one who wants to watch the Fox News, and he has to put it on. I had this long discussion with them about I think it's you that's that that that's causing your own anger issues here, which he then told me I don't know how to live, and so <laughs> you don't know what living is till you watch an hour of Tucker, son. Funny. Oh, it's the truth. Yeah. So it's it's I love, I love him. So we talk. So anyway. The chart you really want to watch here. See how I did that, Daniel? I kept I saw them, that. I kept, right them, I, kept, I kept them hanging on. It's it. The Nasdaq is even more a little more interesting to me here because I the Nasdaq was weaker yesterday than the S. Even though it was a strong day in the market on Thursday, Nasdaq was weaker overall. And it's this. There's two things here that I want to pay attention. It's the it's this breakout in the TNF. This is this is uh, a breakout. Now let me put it into perspective here. Uh, we've just broken out to this range, and so um, I want to just cover this very quickly because this confuses people. Because uh, quickly and Tim, those two things don't seem to not, not go together. Yeah, <laughs> it's like Sesame Street. What uh, are these things that don't go together? What <laughs> What are these? Things? Danny, Danny, to emphasize that point, let me let me just say the words to you: vegan cheesesteak. We're, <laughs> we're gonna come around. We're gonna get there. So this TNX is super interesting to me now because. What what you have with the TNX going higher? What, why ever it's going higher now? Was it Jay Powell? Was it the Fed? By the way, the Fed topic. The Tell way, people what TNX is. Oh, it's the yield. Thank you on the ten-year Treasury. So, how you read this chart? So, ten-year Treasury yields. The rate is going up. Yeah, and so I just want to show you a couple of things that, to me, 
are super interesting on this chart, by the way. Let me just put that back up here. So how you use this chart. The 10-year treasury is now yielding 144, okay? That's what I, I need you to know. It's 144. The reason why tech, the reason why, excuse me, who sorry, is something's going on. Yeah, the reason why tech underperforms when TNX goes higher is their earnings are valued less. Their future earnings have less value, and it's a function of inflation. Okay, and that function of inflation makes money worth less. Okay, here's why this could be problematic for stocks overall okay and then then we're going to get to bitcoin and why bitcoin could be problematic for the entire market the reason why this tnx could be problematic here is because the jobs report going back to the beginning of, by the way the beginning of september feels like a, a year ago right like it's there's been a long run mm -hmm. and it's it's september 24th folks and it's it's felt like forever for september and so when when you have a slow like our jobs slowing right you had a report coming out with Nike, Sales Week in China, uh, FedEx. They're not charging enough for shipping. Like they, they, they didn't hit their rev numbers, right, this week in, our, in an earnings report. And it's like, well, look, I ship a lot of stuff. I know I'm not being facetious here. Like I, the price of shipping, if it goes much higher, you're going to slow down the economy. It's going to, it's, it, it'll, it'll be easier for people to just chuck things out of their windows and hope it gets to the person. Squeeze like, profit margins if you can't charge higher prices oh my gosh and then people stop buying when you yeah. charge higher prices it's a whole circular thinking is that uh, it's economics 101 but yeah <laughs> what you said <laughs> <laughs> like like this dog chasing its tail up we gotta charge more and people are just like dude we gotta uh, buy less <laughs> yeah like that's exactly what it is and it, and it comes it, it's i call it the spicy nugs theory okay and I'm afraid to ask. No, spicy nugs theory. Where, where's the wangus on a cow, Danny? You tell me that. And so the spicy nugs theory is that they're 99 cents from Wendy's, but you're going to pay the DoorDash dude 10 bucks to deliver them to you. And there's only so many weeks of the year you're going to pay someone $10 to deliver a dollar, a dollar item from McDonald's or Wendy's or wherever it is. The, 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 the cost of it makes no sense. It, it, it's the same thing with gasoline. Like if we look at Arbob, oh God, what is Arbob? Uh, gasoline futures, God, did I forget what Arbob is? Oh, here it is. Uh, Arbob, 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 gasoline futures, RB. Uh, so gasoline futures this year, I'm going somewhere with this, folks. Just stick with me, I swear. So here's one five, right? So we're gonna do some shanty uh, calculation here. So gasoline futures are up six. We'll just round it up here, sixty percent. Okay. So gas, gas is up. Just do it price at the pump. Just like yeah, what yeah, you're yeah. paying now. Yeah, I just wanted to show people a, a, a factual representation. Nothing in it. We're all there. like, there's a wangus on the cow. We're going to locate it one day. I want people to deal on the facts. And so it costs people, on average, 60% more to get to work if they're driving. All of this inflation adds up. And so if the market, whether you agree with this, with the way the world works or not, it doesn't matter. Do I think Amazon is going out of business or it's a bad company or any, just because this yield goes up, Tim, doesn't mean that these tech companies should be going down in price. You are a stupid man, Tim Razor, said no one ever. And uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, I get, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, you are, this is true because I get those emails occasionally. <laughs> You are dumb. More Alex and Hunter, Tim. More Alex and Hunter, please. Yes, I've actually received that email several really? times. Oh, yes. <laughs> so. Um, they sent it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I made a different email account. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Alex's burner. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's you, me you didn't, you, it's me you didn't know that burner. Beatrice was Alex's aunt? <laughs> yeah. Son of a bitch. Exactly. <laughs> so the way the the way the world works is they discount these earnings based on the cost of money or based on the the not the cost of money but the, the how money is being devalued okay so earnings are worth less okay and it's thought that you don't like like a, like a cement company or well, inflation and you can pass those the building materials companies typically go higher you can pass those those on to the consumer a lot of these you can't pass on uh with tech companies it's perceived and so Tech 
will underperform. If this is a legitimate breakout in the TNX, then you need to be concerned about tech, okay? And so when we come here to a, 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 an ATR chart, an average true range chart, which we've talked about at nauseum, if you don't understand these charts, feel free to get a hold of me, timbergrass.com, uh, at TJ Razor on Twitter. I will send you uh, videos I've done. I will walk the dog with you so you can understand what you're looking at because this is really valuable information. We're at the two ATR where things on the daily chart will typically pause. This isn't the chart I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about the weekly. And so uh, the weekly chart here is what I would call bullish. This is a bullish chart, folks. And uh, you got, I'm going to shoot. Everybody okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if someone said bullshit or yeah. if that was like a sneeze. No, it's not like somebody took a dive. Oh, is everybody okay? It looks like everybody's okay. okay. Fair enough. Anyway, continue, Tim. Okay, so there's a 521 cross coming. And, and you can see it here on uh, this chart that you're used to looking at. So. Uh, five coming through the 21. And if that and is... And that's a TNX. That's TNX, yeah. And if that's a trigger, so like five... So it looks like short-term momentum is overtaking mid-term momentum. It looks like in the short-term rates are going higher. Thank you. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Come on, Tim Turper. Yeah, and so look, if we come up to the zone here... I that, really wish you'd put white background so people could see that. That, that. that soft pink. I know you're trying to be softer and gentler. That soft, whatever you call that, but that it's hard to it's see purple. the lines. Purple, purple, purple. purple, but it's hard to see your other lines behind it. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> but I digress. Yeah. Uh, but so let's call that area one six. Okay. And the most volatile space in the market isn't really, I don't believe it stops. I believe it's been this bond market or this yielding market. Okay. And so let me show you this. I'm going to go back to a daily chart. Um, let's just look from August 2nd, August 4th. Okay. Do a little shanty work here. To where we are right now in price you're up that's 30 percent. like yields are normally you don't think of yields as volatile right but they are like that's that this is this is you know gy, gy, big gyrations here in this market and if if you if you get a rate shock right it's going to upend a bunch of things and a rate shock doesn't mean you know Rates were much higher earlier in the year, okay, at 1.7. And that's where I think they're headed. I think they're headed to 1.7. And um, that happens to coincide with the third ATR up here. And I think that, I don't know if it would be a shock. It's a weekly chart. So it's like the steamroller scene in Austin Powers. Yeah, like, is it, a, is it a real shock that he's like, ah? you know, no, it's not a shock. But you need to see this coming because when, when you want to understand why, why one asset I'm using the NASDAQ as an asset class. I realize that that's a broad brush. But when you want to understand why one group of stocks might be outperforming or underperforming, I think you're going to come back to this chart here. You're going to come back to the TNX. And then let's do this real quick. Um, the, the dollar. The dollar's having a moment here, too. Not, this is a dollar weekly chart. This is a bullish chart, okay? And so let's get this on a daily. If the dollar breaks out, um, you know, and Don's been all over this. Uh, the dollar, this, this is super bullish daily. Well, chart. interest rates and the dollar are positively correlated. Yeah, because you're protecting the dollar by raising rates. And so, if the dollar yeah. does break out higher here, that that has been bad. That that correlation has been bad for stocks. They, they, they perform poorly, uh, uh, price wise. And so, you really Can you put want that on an ATR chart. Please? Yeah, absolutely. And so, this is the daily chart. And so, you're not extended. You're just hanging around. You're you're consolidating between this. Uh, between the mean and the plus one ATR. And so you're not extended. And um, to give you an example, like you get up to this two ATR and the dollar started pulling back, markets took off. Markets started really performing well that second part of August. And now um, if the dollar were to come up and want to want to want to come up to this two ATR, bell. yeah, or three ATR, you're going to see rates go higher and you're going to see, I believe, uh, the NASDAQ uh, as a whole underperform. Right, wrong, or indifferent. Because there's people out there going, well, why would CrowdStrike? Or why, why, why is that going to underperform, Tim? And, and, and it's, not that, it's not that CrowdStrike is a, a bad stock. It, it, it's that it's the ETFification of, of the markets that you've got these baskets. And these baskets, I mean, there's more product. By product, I mean 
ETFs and mutual funds, there's more baskets than there are equities. Like, like, Let me rephrase that. There's actually more mutual funds yeah. and now ETFs. But even before we had ETFs, there were more mutual funds than stocks you could put in them. So that means that all these mutual funds own the same stocks. Yeah, and, and, and the reason why investors, whether you're in a mutual fund or you're doing this on your own, like wh- however you're investing, the reason why you feel it so much deeper in your portfolio, if you just do ETFs and mutual funds, is because you most likely ha- suffer from duplication. Du- dupli- duplication. That's duplication. That's a word. That's a good, 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 good it, term. You know what? I actually, in, in, in my head, I wanted to add another syllable somewhere between duplication. You were good. Duplication. And um, the, du- the duplication of your stocks in, I've got a socially aware ETF that only uh, cashes out on high T on unicorns when there's a full moon. And, and it probably just has Amazon in it, right? Like, it, 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 I've got a stock that, that, uh, that hates Jeff Bezos. You know, like, I can, like you can have the most ridiculous name for your ETF. It's got Tesla and Amazon. And you probably own that thing like 20 times. And so you want to be really, Don has a good phrase for di- diversification for, uh, for diversification sake. Or Don says something that's uh, catchy that I can't remember right now. I should probably just ask him. What do you say, Don? Uh, don't diversify into a downtrending. Don't diversify into a downtrending what? Into a downtrending asset class. Oh, there you asset go. Or stock. Yeah. Just because you're, it's like buying rotten fruit at the, market don't do that <laughs> there it is just because it's so, in the food pyramid doesn't mean you eat it when it's rotten <laughs> tell you what that food pyramid man paid off by the bread industry Jeez, we made they made a whole generation of kids fat with bread 18 servings of grains a day it's a good food pyramid can i make a point for please do you can, where are you go first off please are, please bring what, it back to stock what, we're about to go to the left turn again. what what room are you in all right, where are you? What cosmos are you talking to us from? You sound hollow. What happened to you? I can't see you. <laughs> can you hear me? I can hear you. We can hear you fine. You sound okay. hollow. Are you okay? I, I maybe it's my speaker. I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. Buddy. You don't usually have that that door behind you. Is that a different door? Did your wife put you in the basement again? Are you in a yeah, new house? Yeah, she locked me out. Did you move? <laughs> are you in a new house? The I'm acoustics. Moving, in- I'm- yeah, moving next week, but are it things because mo- we have stuff. Hold on a second. Yeah. Are, I it's have, an echo. It's I have echo. specifically trained ears. There, has been, <laughs> there have been <laughs> items moved in Alex's home that have changed the acoustics of his voice. Have you been packing? Oh, man. Yeah, you- we're packing. That could be it. The, the room is moved around. See that? I, I, it's impressive. No, don't tell Tanya. Fighting mics. Spray yeah, the again. fighting... The Connecticut hey, School of Broadcasting, they have a whole me. class. At, yeah, at the Connecticut School of Broadcasting upstairs, they have a specific class on room acoustics. And you have to do it blindfolded. So what they do is they put you in a room. It's like that movie. What, who's that lady who uh, was in Miss Congeniality? What's that room? I mean, what's that lady's, that, that actress? And then like, Sandra Sandra Bullock? Yeah, yeah. Like she had the mailbox where she reads through. Was that with Nicolas Cage where she had the, the mailbox too? Like she was... Oh, the, not the no. notebook. No, she reads through and like it was the like a different house. time. The lake Keanu house. Reeves. Keanu Reeves is under there. Oh, Keanu Reeves is in the lake house with Sandra Bullock. Yeah. Oh, anyway, the where I was going with that. So what they do is they put you in a blindfold, like that Sandra Bullock movie. Is it called Blindfold? It was a big hit during Bird the Bird Box. Bird Box. Yeah. Netflix. Bird never saw yes. it. I never saw it either. No. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Anyway, the class was odd. Like you, I, I, you had to like figure out where things were moved and where the sound was coming from. From it, very difficult. Go ahead, Alex. You were going to say something about something. Go ahead, Alex. <laughs> it's kind of alluding to what Don said about um, diversification. So you can you can buy a value stock and some tech stocks, or get into housing stocks, what have you, or Amazon, and you think you're diversifying. But if the general market comes down. You're, you can't hide from that. So diversification, in a sense, it, it, I, I believe it's a lazy way of investing. If you do some work and try to follow what the market's doing, you'll, you'll find the right kind of stock. So I, I just, I'm not a big fan of diversification. I think that no matter what you're doing, that overall market, will, it will take anything down. doesn't matter where, you, where your, where your well, stocks let, are. Let, let me clean it up just a little bit. So in an uptrending market, you want to have enough diversification so that one stock 
doesn't cream you. If they're cooking the books or doing something wrong that you're not aware of, so that you don't want to get too too top heavy in one stock. So you may want to have right. five, six percent position max. Or now, one sector. Or one sector. Now, in a downtrending market, every th- th- this is the dirty little secret Wall Street knows, but they don't tell you. See, the, the yeah. idea, the, the philosophy of diversification is that you have enough different positions so that you're protected from the downside from a well, but in a bear market or a market correction, 80% of all stocks go down, so it all goes down together. So like in the economic crisis 2008, uh, small caps went down 60%, emerging markets went down 70, the NASDAQ went down 50, and the S&P went down 42. Take your pick. You got a basket of a bunch yeah. of stuff. That, there's only a couple sectors that actually held their own and went up. So in 2008, the only thing you wanted were treasuries, gold, and cash. Everything else got got creamed. Yeah. And so so Thank there's times that. there's times to be just enough diversified, 10, 15 positions in stocks, maybe a few ETF sectors or broad, and then there's times to be have a lot of cash or maybe a few shorts to hedge. Or but totally different. Mm-hmm. You know what? Yeah. I can see why that one fan wrote to you last week and told you I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't show him all the email, the the fan email I get. Was that the other burner email that he was writing to himself too? Or? <laughs> it, yeah. <that's, laughs> yeah. We, we made fun. Yeah, Beatrice <laughs> sent sent me another one. We, sent we, me another one. We made fun of Danny. Like we we made fun of how Danny questions things. And the one person writes in, keep questioning everything, Danny. You're on our side. And I'm like, he that. said, I like, I like somebody that questions everything. He signed his name it with us. Say- Love you. He signed, heart you. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, well, Danny's fan, man. That's hey, awesome. If, people, if other people want to write in the show, where do they go to do Oh, that? you know what? That's a great, 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 great uh, thing. Uh, here we go. You get a hold of Dan at Revere Asset. If you are want to get a burner account with Hunter, Hunter at Revere Asset, there's Alex, <laughs> there's Don. Call us. If you want to just tell Danny you love him, 855-732-5932. But listen, listen. So all of this, though, I don't think, I don't know if what I'm about, it's, it's going to get deep, Dan. Okay? I'm, I'm not being facetious. So I, I'm going to need you to, to pay attention and not think of the wangus on a cow. Okay. So... What China did, this is all in the show notes, by the way. A um, couple pieces here I want to point out to you. Like A lot of people know that China banned crypto. We're going to, I want to talk about that right now because I think this has deeper meanings for the markets in the coming weeks. But there's a great article. Um, here it is. Um, oh, you're not going to read it. No, I didn't. Okay, okay. You know just, what? Just checking, just can we checking. Just, can we just talk about hurt feelings? <laughs> You know, uh, we've got a really good show going on here, and a, and a good Don't teammate. Don't get your wagus all in a while. <laughs> and a good teammate would be encouraging me, but a, but my my teammate in the studio goes, "I I never went would... to the Connecticut School of Upstairs Broadcasting. No, no, broadcasting upstairs. That's why you couldn't get in. But listen." A good teammate would be like, you know what, man? I know you're going to do great. Business. I got your back. I'm your wingman. You're so bullshit. <laughs> um, digital currency. Tim, so- I know. Report him to HR. <laughs> I him to HR. Except that he is HR. Yeah. Yeah. Send your That's complaints to me. Yeah. Send your complaints to me and I'll dismiss them. So uh, digital currency is paved the way for negative interest rates. We're going to head all, all of this ties together right here. An insider, uh, an insider uh, to money and power in China tells all. Uh, these three pieces all tie in with what I'm going to do next here. Okay, and so China bans. Let's first take a look. Let's get these on the daily chart. Take a look at the the two majors, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. So we'll just give you a status check on Bitcoin. You know, like Tim, well, that's not so bad. Just consolidating up here. Weekly charts are still nice. I I like I I like Bitcoin. I like Ethereum. I like Ethereum more than I like Bitcoin. But let's make sure I'm on a weekly. I'm on a weekly. And yeah, we're holding the the weekly mean here on Bitcoin. Let's look at Ethereum. Yeah, uh, Ethereum uh, holding the weekly mean, and so, but this I believe has bigger ties. Uh, I think all I'm going to try to explain this, Danny, and you're going to have to try to jump in and just put the interpreter on because it's a jumbled mess. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've tried several times. Well, I was going to say, that would be any different than any other thing. So I, I drove in this morning and I'm trying to, in my mind, I'm, I'm in deep thought. It is no joke. I'm in deep thought about trying to, how I'm going to explain. My Jack it. Handy. Deep thoughts. Yes, yes. I'm going to, I'm trying to 
think about how I'm going to explain this topic, right? I didn't want to lead with it because I thought it would kill the show. And I'm trying to think of the best way to take something I believe is complex and, and make it simple. I'm not lying to you. I didn't, I, I, it wasn't my morning to drop the kids off at daycare. I didn't come to the office. I went to daycare. Like I got so <laughs> lost in thought. I, I looked up. Okay, kids. Oh, they're not here. I looked up and I'm like, this isn't the, literally my first thought was, this isn't the office. Like I ended up at daycare, which is, Danny knows where it's a good 15, 20 minutes down the road. And I'm like, son of a bitch, this isn't daycare. I called my wife. I'm like, you'll never believe it. She goes, why? I'm like, daycare. She's like, why? And I'm like, I got lost in thought. She goes, you need to go to work. And I'm like, that's where I'm, that's where I'm trying to head. <laughs> yeah. So with, with China banning crypto transactions, crypto mining, everything, all crypto, right? Mm -hmm. This, I believe, has negative effects on Tether. So Tether, as you know, there's, um, uh, is the uh, cryptocurrency that ties one Tether to dollar one U.S. Back. dollar. The problem is it's not – they're not talking. It's not very clear. It's nefarious why they don't actually have one dollar for every Tether. Okay? So it's believed – They did. Would you just call it a well, dollar? <laughs> right. It's believed that most of their money is tied up in commercial paper and that commercial paper lives in China. Wow. Right. That's so, not the same as a dollar. <laughs> well, That's not different from a fractional banking system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you put it that way, Danny. <laughs> so then, but let's talk about this for a second. Because there are, this is where it gets a little confusing and how this can bring down markets. We're going to talk about this. So there are a bunch of people, and I had, I, I, I might have in my book bag, that are borrowing against their crypto. Okay. And they might be doing it in ways to get interest, right? Like they, we did that months ago. Right. How people were putting up their crypto Generate an extra to get 8%, 9%, 8, 10% interest, which is unheard of. And the only reason why people are doing this is because of. But it was paid in crypto, <laughs> not really real right, interest in right. dollars. Yeah. So right, really, but yeah. you're still getting 8%, 8%, but you're, 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 you're able to do all this stuff by betting your crypto and if the bond market falls and now think about what commercial paper might represent in china evan is it it's evan grade right even true even evan grade evan yeah. grade so they've got this crisis going on uh in china and the whatever they're telling you it's it's way worse right oh, because yeah. they're, yeah, they're yeah, leaking yeah. out what they want you to know not what's really happening and so You've got all this paper that has the opportunity now to turn very bad. And so a lot of people are focusing on these interest payments. Now, they made the payments to the Chinese nationals, right? They didn't make the payments so far to foreign nationals. And it's my belief that China doesn't care about foreign nationals. If you want to sell your Procter & Gamble goods to, to China uh, and there are billions and billions of people, you're going to, that's the cost of business doing business in China. You're going to take a hit on whatever you invest in. Who cares, right? Mm -hmm. Which maybe we should reevaluate doing business in China, right? Just a thought. I mean, other than the human rights violations and the working conditions. Oh, I don't know. The environmental impact. Of, we could go on. But now you have financial risk, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to take a hit. If you want to do business in China, you probably had to get, you probably had to pay the Mickey of, you know, hey, the vig is you got to buy some of these Evan grade bonds, right? And so you, <laughs> and now you got some worthless paper. But here's the thing. If the tether is backed by Chinese commercial paper and Chinese commercial paper bonds are, are now not B rated bonds, but they're C or if you haven't read, you get the D, right? Uh, and and the, the, their thought is that there's and be, not being an ongoing concern. That's what they label you. When you're about to go out of business, the rating agencies come in and they, 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 they label you as a risk of not being an ongoing concern. Uh, in, in Tim Terpreter, that means bankruptcy risk. Right. So now the paper that Tether holds, and, and they have, can somebody look up how many Tethers are out in circulation? It's billions. And if 75%, 50% of Tethers are backed by Chinese commercial paper, and that paper becomes worthless. So that 8% interest that you were supposedly getting is really just bankrupt commercial Chinese paper. So it really was just a big yeah. 
Ponzi scheme. Yeah. If that's the case. If if that's the case. Alex, how much you say it is? Um, yeah, it said 2.2 billion. I don't know if that seems low, but I that may, maybe that's what the number is. But I, so, I don't know. I Google. That's what Google said. Okay. But it's, I, I right. got I got I got 68 billion. Yeah, that, that, I thought it was cap. much bigger than that. Yeah, the market cap of okay. Tether is much bigger. So if these but Tether, let's, it's it's ever grand. Ever grand. Thank thank you. I knew I was ever grand. Ever grand. I know so, Dan went with Ever because he always go he also goes with E. <laughs> so he just he just Evolution. defaults to a long E at the beginning of every word. Dan is the, the e you're like the Okay, umlaut. don't take word. don't take Tim off on another tangent. We're trying to tie this in. You're like the upside down E, the umlaut of of verbiage. So um umlaut. Says says the Tim with his snake lips. <laughs> so if these tethers become imperiled, worth a lot less than one US dollar because most of it is backed by foreign paper, foreign bonds, mm -hmm. this is really bad. Okay. But that that's that's like one silo of information. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's one silo. And this is not going to play out in, in like 23, 48. This is going to play out over the next couple of weeks. We're not going to know if this is really something. For, the for, Chinese paper problem. Yeah. But I've been sitting on this. I've been sitting on this for... By the way, before you go to Alpha Cybersecurity, if you are, I mean, cyber, I mean, cryptocurrency, the new appointee that's in charge of the Biden appointee for the SEC? Commission on Currency. No, it's a C, something CC, something on currency is very anti cryptocurrency. Well, so you may you may no, get a negative thing. No, no, this is this is my my thought here is that China is the envy of all the world right now. Ooh, yeah. Hear this take. Hot take. Hot take. Hot take. I gotta Hot hear take. this. I don't know why they would. Why you would? Gary Gensler. The uh, SEC, he's the SEC, right? Gary Gensler, mm -hmm. and all the all the bank heads mm -hmm. of all the countries mm -hmm. wish they could do what China just did. What China is doing is driving you right to their centralized digital currency. China, China doesn't want you on on any kind of crypto, any kind of decentralized system. They don't want you sending money out of China. Money stays in China. They want to track all your purchases. They want, they want to, to control. They want right. to turn it on and turn it off. I look. I'm going to put my Dan tinfoil hat on, which I keep in the closet next to the candles, and because he knows I'm right deep down. <laughs> no. Go on, Tim. Keep going. Don't let him slow you down. Yeah, because I believe that. There are people within the governments that wish they had this ability. They wish they could track you like this. And more so than ever, it's what's in this article about digital currencies, which you'll find in the show notes. And let me show you those show notes right quick. Um, you'll find them right here. And it's the Wall Street Journal article uh, right here. Digital currencies pave way for deeply negative interest rates. So I'm just going to read. I know, Danny, we're going long. Here. I'm going to. Oh, I'm, surprise. <laughs> no, that never happened. <laughs> Danny, right. you're like you're like Joe Biden at a funeral looking at your watch. So. Go ahead. Yeah. So. I'm going to read for just a second here. OK. OK. Go ahead. By the way, where's my go team? Ahead, where's my ahead. teammate at? Go ahead. No, I want to hear something positive. Like, say, send me off into the play. With with like hey hey like did you see Doug Peterson look at look at Nick Foles and go Philly special Philly special he didn't go son of a bitch Nick I don't know what to do here no they said <laughs> Philly special with confidence investors have been ignoring progress towards government issued electronic uh, money even as many countries are progressively rapidly uh, trending towards their own online cash this move in China right now is exactly what that first sentence means okay they should ask two questions will the Federal Reserve our Federal Reserve, issue a digital dollar and will eventually replace physical banknotes. The guy who wrote this, James McIntosh, I agree with him 100% here. I think the answer to both questions is yes. And those who agree should be assessing the impact 
on future monetary policy because dramatic changes likely within the time span of the 30-year treasury. Listen to this next paragraph, Daniel. This is going to make the hair on your neck stand up. This is Daniel me. This is where the wangus comes from, Daniel. The main monetary power of the digital dollar comes from the abolition. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's fine. I almost said the abominable. Abolishment? Abolishment, yes. That's what I was going for. It came out as abominable. It came from the abolishment of banknotes. If people can't hoard physical money, it becomes much easier to cut interest rates far below zero. Otherwise, the zero rate on your physical banknotes stuffed under your mattress looks attractive. And if interest rates can go far below zero, monetary policy is suddenly much more powerful and better suited to tackle deflation. Now watch what a Connecticut School of Broadcasting Upstairs graduate does. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of the show, after we got through the nonsense, I, I had mentioned the jobs report, mm -hmm. right? And I talked about the TNX. Mm -hmm. That, my friends, is inflation without growth, which is otherwise known as deflation or stagflation. It's J not deflation. It Infl it's stagflation. Yeah. Deflation. Stag Jay Powell yeah. would have the most armament to fight this if he could take rates below zero. And he can't. He can't. If he, if Jay Powell starts lowering interest rates right now, he's going to scare the market into a recession. He can't do it. The tool that all these bank heads want are the ease of use of getting you off of physical, cold, hard cash, which is un in theory untrackable. And they want to manipulate rates. And China. Well, you hit the key word manipulate. Yeah, and China just did that today. Like China took the boldest step of where the rest of the world wants to be. And hence why China today is the envy of the world. Do you think Gary Gensler? Oh, envy of the monetary leader central banks. There you go. They're a bunch of PhD morons and idiots. Taking the rates below zero is purely theoretical. They don't know what it's going to do. Right. They don't know that it'll work. That's total nonsense. Right. It, it defies all economic theory that's sane and rational. Right. And so if that's you, why they have modern monetary theory now, Tim, and then too, where they say we can print as much money as we want and it won't have any consequences. They're morons and they're idiots. And if you want to see that chart, see, everything is chartable. Most everything is chartable. If you want to see what MMT looks like on a chart, just go, go to the Fed's money go, supply. Go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go to the Fed money supply. And as long as that is increasing or holding serve, mm -hmm. the markets won't fall apart. Mm -hmm. If they tighten monetary policy, oh, they're screwed. They, they can't. They yeah. can't do it. They've hit the Hobson's choice. <coughs> this years ago. This driving to digital dollars. I don't know when, it's coming here. China, China fired. I've sat on this for like two or three weeks now. I read it and I'm like, it's not time. It's not time. It's not time. China fires this salvo this morning, of no more, no more cryptocurrency. So they've eliminated like. Do you know how much money has left China? Because well, that's, they, that's one of the reasons they also want to eliminate cryptocurrency. Yeah. Because they want to be able they because because yeah. a Chinese person you can only put up have so much gold hidden on your body and in your orifices right. to cross the border even if and you got to physically cross the border with cryptocurrency <laughs> you could be living in China and you can get it out of the country just with a computer and then and then get it later. They don't like that. They want to control everything. So that's another reason they're doing it. This, I know that they do want a digital currency too. Yeah. But this, this digital currency article is deep. Um, you got to read it a couple of times if, you, uh, you know, if you're a B student at the uh, Connecticut School of Broadcasting upstairs. But I'm not. I've only read it once. It's in the show notes. It's in the show notes. Yeah. Though, and I encourage you all to uh, take a gander at it because it is, it's where we're headed. And if, if they could, if the government, I mean, think about how much money has been lost in taxes in this country to cryptocurrency. Oh, but they're they're going to address that with this new tax bill. Yeah, they're <laughs> going to try. And oh, the, they're going to. And the way to do it, you know, you know how the way, you know, the way to capture. I already know how they're going to do it. They've already said it. They're, 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 they're taxing it, making it a, a, a gain. And I think even ordinary income, that's what they're arguing about. 
Is it capital gain or is it ordinary income? And you, you brokerage firms, you crypto brokerage firms, it's a felony if you don't report all the transactions. To us. Make it so illegal. So even even yeah. before even before mm -hmm. they have their own crypto or before they get uh, the 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 tracking, they are going to make it. They're going to put the onerous on the reporting to the places where you do it. They're going to make it illegal. Oh, well, they very well might. Because I mean, no one, nobody wants their ransoms paid in uh, in dollars. They don't want anything physical. They don't, they don't want. Well, they're also putting forth a bill to have a way ability to put a tracer or tracking on the transactions, so the government has a backdoor way to to, to monitor the transaction. Yeah, the, the, they don't want. The, yes, they don't want. The ransom. way this is all unfolding, it's it. The, there's there's a lot. It's, there's been a big explosion today, but you don't want to take your eyes off off the off the ball here. The the one one ball is all these tethers tied to bad commercial, potentially bad commercial paper, okay, in China. That's one. The other one is this separate siloed issue of going of if we get to a digital dollar, and what is that? What effect does that have on rates? The, the, there's a lot going on here, and look. For the, for the folks that are like, just tell me the stocks that are going up. Tell me the stocks are going down. Look, the one day a week that we address some macro issues that could affect markets is the podcast. Five nights a week from Don, Hunter, myself, you get, red, you get nothing but red meat. You don't get any, any of this kind of talk. But these are, this is what's going to shape markets. And right now, look, the S&Ps are just hovering around the 21. This is, the S&Ps are just a stone throw away from all that. The market is not, the market is not in peril. They're, what what did they call that on CNBC for like a year they were running last year? What did they call that? Markets, markets in, in turmoil. Yes, yeah, markets in turmoil. Yeah, yeah. yeah There's like a this. great study on it uh, on forward returns after they run that uh, markets in turmoil <laughs> uh, segment. Yeah. I, by the way, I believe that every time uh, CNBC sends the alert of like Dow up 600 points, Dow down 600 points, like those are the, infl th those are the reverse markets. Like yeah, yeah, those are the inflection uh, points. I wish there was a study on that. Because I think they're just like when IBD sent the uh, text out, uh, they shorted the uh, shorted the queues, and I was just like, they just put the bottom in, yeah, and they, yeah. they kind of did. Um, so this is not like the world is ending. You can't go and short the entire market based on what I just said. You can't be that. You can't be that person. Well, well, nothing I said in this crypto. Well, I'll take the other side. If they go negative rates, it makes stocks more valuable because you you it makes the digital dollars worth less and you cause inflation. There's go, there's going to be one assets. Yeah, and and look, and now let's just circle back one second here. Watch the TNX and watch the dollar. I think those are the keys to the first neck for the next three weeks. The the dollar and uh, and the yields. And then watch, watch this NASDAQ. The, the thing I believe that's been holding up now, there's been a rotation every time the one sector breaks down, but really a, a lot of the holding, the markets being elevated still is, is these, these huge stocks like Microsoft, Apple, um, Google, Facebook, Tesla. Like if these start to break down for some reason. It'll take the whole market. I, be, I believe it will. Uh, but that, look, you just gotta you gotta keep watching the charts and 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 look we update this in almost real time and we're always available. Market is, like well, if, right now the market's in a bull trap. Yeah, so. yeah. And so if you have questions on this type of stuff, like inner inner debt, you're at home and something like Monday, you're at home and you're like, what the hell's happening? Don't like this is what separates us from every strip mall advisor and everybody in China that we're actually you're you're going to talk to the strategists. You want to talk to people that are engaged in the markets. You can call. 855-732-5932. If you go to uh, stripmalladvisor.com and say, what's up? They don't know. They literally know what's being played on their hold music if you call Charles Schwab. That's all they know. Call Charles Schwab. You get the hold music. The market went up today three points. They literally only know that. They have. Interesting. So uh, a lot of the brokers, not just Schwab, a lot of the brokers, what they have is a rover, someone that actually knows the market. These these guys, these these people are really smart. Like they 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 traded on the CBOT, they they traded on the floor. Like they're 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 in the markets, right? But they but they have a region, 
and there's like 10 of them, maybe 12. And they, they just go to the different branches. The people that work in the branches, they are your relationship. They make an appointment for a couple of days and you got to yeah. have a certain amount of money to be able to get to see them. So if you have questions, they go, well, let's make an appointment next week. And then they have. The so if you've ever called your strip mall advisor branch, no matter who you're with, and they say, yeah, why don't you come in in a couple of days? It's because they're going to call the person who actually knows the markets. This is not, listen, I, I've got a lot of inside baseball. On this. They're going to call the person who actually knows the market. And they're going to bring them in for the meeting because if they let you alone with your relationship manager, you're going to leave there. It's like you don't want to go to the back of Kentucky Fried Chicken and see why everybody hates them. What are they doing to the food? Why does everybody hate Orange Julius? You don't want to see. They don't want you to see the lack of knowledge that pervades their office or their branch. So call. Don't ever, even if you're not a client, just call us. We are here to empower individual investors across the globe. So with that. I got a call. No, I got a, I got a, I got a message that uh, we need more Hunter in the show. Got that call. And again. Alex. Really, this was about and Don. No, it was and really, me. No, it was, <laughs> certainly, it certainly wasn't you. The Wangus. The Wangus. And we can even, we can even, sure, bring in Zach once in a while. Yeah. We need more Hunter. And I believe, I believe there was a special Zoom Hunter had this week special Zoom meeting that I was told to ask him. Hunter, I what? don't know. If, I don't know if I'm aware of a special Zoom meeting. I would make up a story right now before you hurt someone's feelings because oh. someone I'm, told me. I mean, I'm, I'm reaching. I'm reaching deep in my memory here. <laughs> He's got to be talking about me, Mom. I got, I, got, I got nothing. I got nothing. Did you not Zoom with? Who did you Zoom with? You didn't Zoom? I, is this a, is this a direct through the, message or is from me, Mommy? There's only one, one, one person's grandmother that writes to me. <laughs> That's why I said it's got to be me, Mom. Look, just think about it's this. The burner account. Yes, yeah, seriously. <laughs> hey, think, think about this, I'm, Hunter, I'm while I show you a that. vegan <laughs> cheesesteak. Okay? <laughs> I want you to just rack the recesses before you hurt me, Mommy's feelings. I want everyone to contemplate that there's a vegan cheesesteak being served at the Cowboys Stadium. And I'm not going to lie to you. The picture makes it look pretty good. I, I'd be willing to yeah, try. I was, I was oh, for for it audio, yeah, for, for audio only as listeners, read that tweet. What does that say? It says, uh, "Sign of the times." The Dallas Cowboys are offering this plant-based vegan cheesesteak sandwich at games this season. Oh my gosh! Can you pull up a photo on your computer? Even? Oh yeah, I probably can. Let me, let me <clears> not to, not to commit to the bit for you guys or anything, but I'm curious. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Let me let me just uh, uh, get it going here because this is. Uh, Still haven't thought of this Zoom meeting, Hunter. Gosh, I'm telling you. No, dude, I've I've got nothing. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to reach out to me, mommy, after the show and address uh address this phantom Zoom meeting. Okay. You didn't Maybe. zoom her after your number one draft pick tore his hamstring last night on Thursday night football. Oh, here we go. Oh, sadly, what happened? Sadly, no. Oh, here it is. Um, that looks good, right? Know, uh, information on the uh on the. I hamstring. knew McCaffrey it, was gonna it make bad? it into this podcast. Oh gosh. <laughs> I would he's, eat that. he's out about three weeks. You wouldn't eat that, but Tim, okay. uh, Zach, you would eat this. Hey, look at that. Now oh. that. Oh. What, what, what Hold that up a little that? higher, Don. Hold that up a little higher. There you go. Podcast. Look at that. That's, that's, a that's, that's a real one. That's a real one. That's an actual. Oh, an actual man. Cheese cheese what are the chances <laughs> that... Don, like nobody knows. What are the chances? What do you mean, what are the chances that Don's got a cheesesteak? Is it Monday? Is it Wednesday? Is it Friday? <laughs> it's at least 50-50. At least 50-50. In Pennsylvania. If they, and, and, in it's Pennsylvania. In the, and it's in the, in, in the afternoon, like uh, mid lunchtime. Come on. Where'd you get it? Well, hold on. Uh, more importantly, where'd you get it from, Don? A uh, little mom and pop shop yep. in Nesquahoning, Pennsylvania. The best, the best sandwiches, man. Are, I, I, not, Fantastic. Not the, not the famous great. ones. It's, it's the little corner ones, man. So oh, freaking Don, Don, yep. no question. Don's got his own Philly cheesesteak. What if, the fellas have no idea what I'm going to talk about on the show. That's the beauty of the show. And what are the chances? I'm like, it's got to be one. Like, you have a better chance of getting struck by lightning and hit by a bag of money on the way out the door. Here. The Don has a cheesesteak. Like that. Nah, that I'm going to bring up. That I'm going to bring up. Oh, 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 oh no way. Gonna Bring up cheesesteak. I'm going to bring up a vegan uh, cheesesteak. Yeah, that's that's true. And then Don's going to unwrap and uh, show the real deal. There's just no chance. We're an hour into the show. Yeah, come on. And you didn't tell We're him special. in advance. No, yeah. I no, when like even if I did, <laughs> how would he get it there? <laughs> That's true. Anyway. 
Okay, a Hunter. special podcast. Yeah. All right, Hunter. So Keep going. Oh, it's not going to make the show, is it? It's not going to make is the, the show. Is the part where I say it's not going to make the show make the show? Because that's funny. Okay, go ahead, Hunter. Tell me the uh, tell me all the stocks that are going up on Monday. We'll get Hunter. We'll get Alex to do all the stocks that are going down. And then Donna. Go ahead. That sounds good. All right, well, because I also am a graduate of the Connecticut CVS Walgreens, whatever the hell it is, broadcasting <laughs> school. CVS. <laughs> Thank you. It's upstairs. Um, I've been taking notes this whole time, and I Good. have I have a couple of things. I'm going to circle back here. Then I'm going to get to the stocks, and then I've got some interesting stuff on uh, TNX and the dollar uh, as well. Looking back about seven or Fantastic. eight years or so. Uh, but first, on diversification, there's a little saying uh, called "diversification doesn't work when you need it the most." Yeah. Um, hence, 2020 uh, with COVID, 2008. Yeah. Uh, it's all, it's all, it's a wonderful concept, but when you need diversification to work for you, it often does not. Uh, so that's really an easy way to think about it in your head, in my opinion. Secondly, I heard some talk about brisket. We looked at, you know, the pig movie with Nicolas Cage. Chipotle is now serving smoked brisket. Saw and that. Were you aware yeah. of this? I'm very Have aware of it? it. No, I, I got an invite to it. I've got like 4,000 points on my app. You must have a gazillion points on it. Um, I do. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this chart it's like cheers he walks in hunter yeah, yeah they this, know his name <laughs> this, this this chart when the market was at its worst this chart was at like this week this market was this chart was at its best this is my favorite one of my favorite stocks of all time i th this chipotle just doesn't give it up don't get married to it because that too will change sometime. oh it'll change sometime yeah it'll change but this is what they've got going on is astounding Go ahead. i'm sorry i agree no, you're good. And then lastly, we don't have to do this right now, but it just occurred to me, we were talking about Tucker Carlson. I know Don is the king of impersonations, and I just thought, man, I bet he's got a great Tucker Carlson oh, impersonation. Oh, does he? I don't no, know. Like I don't know. He, he, may, he may not. No, no Tucker? Not Tucker. No. There's a, uh, who's the, is it John Sorry. Calienda? Or who's the guy that does uh, the John Frank Green Calienda. and all those guys? Yes, Frank I think Calienda. he does a Tucker Carlson, perhaps. I'll have to go look it up. but. Let's get to some stocks, though. Let's Tim. do it. Will you pull up uh, SIVB Silicon Valley Bank for me? There you go. Look at that. Yes. Yeah, so this is uh, what I would probably say is one of the strongest uh, banks at the moment. It's been one of the first to break out, have some good continuation. However, it is a little bit extended to the upside. I know you showed TNX also a little bit extended to the upside as well. Uh, there's a the eight EMA is kind of in the six fifteen six twenty range that also corresponds to the highs from I think nine sixteen and nine seventeen. So I would watch and see if it, it possibly comes back to around that area. So roughly six twenty ish or uh, somewhere in there. Just in the, it is a little bit extended, but uh, it is very strong. It's acting very well. It's had some volume too uh, over the last couple of days. Secondly, I've got a group that's acted a lot better than many of the other value plays. Uh, and that's going to be chemical agriculture space. So Tim, pull up MOS for me, please. And I, I believe it's up two or three percent today. Mm -hmm. uh, also, a little bit extended. Another name here, Tim, is NTR Nutrien. And you can see these are pretty good looking charts. And then SQM is the last one. It's a laggard today. Not necessarily sure why uh, MOS is is acting like a leader today. There's been times where SQM acts like a leader, uh, but Compared to, to some of the other groups that it had a tendency to move with this year, it's held up very well, respecting the 21. Uh, for example, like steel stocks just got absolutely hammered, but these really didn't give much back. And I know those aren't the same sectors uh, gotcha. or anything like that, but it's just something I was noticing uh, as some of those other areas were getting hit really hard. This was an area that was holding up. And then also we've got the travel stocks uh, starting to shape up a little bit. Will you pull up AAL, Tim? Mm -hmm. So you can see it's also getting a little bit extended here, but getting back through some moving averages, you're also seeing Carnival and Norwegian get through their 200 today. Jets is trying to get through the 200. That's your J-E-T-S is the uh, airline's ETF, uh, kind of the basket hey, there. Where do we stand on the quarterback for the Jets? He's, he's uh, not good. No way. I don't like I don't, him. I don't, I don't judge QBs uh, until... I mean, I've got friends that are telling me Trevor Lawrence sucks. So, I mean, I don't judge quarterbacks until about halfway. The Jets are the year, cursed. The end of the year. Well, he's Zach Wilson's his name, right? Yeah. yeah. My, my whole family's talent. been Jets fans for 20 years. It's the same story every year. 
I just can't get <laughs> and their offensive line their offensive line suck. I mean, no quarterback can succeed behind a shitty offensive line. Yeah, that's yeah. Like, Tom Brady can. Uh, well, oh. oh he's had some. When has he been behind a bad offensive line? I'm gonna say New England always had a good offensive line. <laughs> I think, I think he was that. talking about the Jaguars, Don. I'm just talking like <laughs> yes, I, I, I'm not going to argue. I would that. guess <laughs> if, if Tom Brady went to the Jets, the Jets would be a lot better. That's is, Ur- is Urban Meyer going to make it? Like, and I, I say make it. Like, is, I, I don't know. Did you guys it, see the bit where he told uh, is it Angio, the coach of the Broncos, that every week it's like playing Alabama? Did you guys see that? Uh, no, yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah, I, the Broncos coach looked at him like, "What the heck are you talking about, bro?" I'm like this is the I, NFL. I, I there's rumors coming out, and it's coming from players. Like this is the only place these rumors would be coming from is uh, uh, they're leaking like he, he's treating them like college players, like like yeah. instead of instead of pros, he's mm-hmm. treating them like college kids, and that that is not lying. He's well. also not running the ball at all, which makes Trevor's job a lot harder. Yeah, like uh, who's the last college coach to go to the pros to really? Be successful. Jimmy Johnson's the first name that comes to mind. Uh, Pete Carroll. Who's the Seahawks? Oh, Who's yeah, the Pete C- Carroll. Pete Carroll, yeah. 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 He Pete Carroll them. failed twice in the NFL before he succeeded with the Seahawks, though. That's a great he point. Went he went back to college go? and then came back. He yep. went back to college. He goes straight from the and came he, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he coached the Jets. To the Seahawks. He coached yeah, the Jets first or the Patriots, Patriots first. All right, Hunter, let's go back to stocks now. Okay, okay. okay. We're, we're not a sports show. Last two here. Lulu and ZI, both of these are acting pretty well today. I know I've talked about both of these on my nightly videos a few times. Um, Lulu is acting like it's respecting the eight. It uh, undercut it on that gap day, but essentially closed right on it, on the gap down on Monday, I should say. And then ZI is sitting right at a pivot. I want to make uh, a... God, I'm sorry. Go finish, finish. No, that's I'm it. Sorry. That's it. I just, I, I've talked about these pretty much um, in, Zoom, in exhaustion on my videos. Zoom Info's business model is, or business, part of the business is really interesting. Is with everything that Apple's done with uh, privacy and, and it's tougher to get a hold of folks and it don't track me and uh, everything that's happening, Zoom Info has valuable, valuable databases of uh, names and, and, and you, you can send emails like you, you, you license the database. So they got you on a subscription model. Zoom Info has got the data. It's got the data that most businesses want. And, uh, I think that makes this company much, much, much. Or we'll see where they're at relative to it. Yeah, that's all time. We are time. long ZI, by the way. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, <clears throat> yeah. This business model, um, this makes their data with everything that's happening privacy wise in the country. This this company has got it locked in right now. Very powerful. Information is the new oil. <laughs> I'm telling you, like being able. It's true. Yeah, being able to get a hold of people and. That's why, like, people are, are taking a – they're down on Facebook. And, and there, there's just no other – I mean, I, I get it. Uh, this chart looks awful. But there's no other method right now in 2021 to reach consumers at a granular level than uh, advertising on YouTube or Facebook's properties. And that's Instagram, because I don't think you can advertise on WhatsApp. So that's Instagram and uh, Facebook. It's the you, people are too, you're zoned out on on commercials on on digital, whether you're streaming or not. This is how you're getting a hold of people, and most people are using. Even if you're watching TV, you're scrolling through comments, whether it's your fantasy football league, uh, you're you're updating. Like, it, how do you get people? On a granular, it's not this big wide net anymore. It's targeted. That's why Zoom Info, Zoom Info lets you target, Facebook lets you target, and what's a, what's this on a weekly chart? I almost want to say dollar cost average of Facebook. What's the weekly mean? Uh, this one is was coming out of a big base um, yeah. from an IPO, I believe, in twenty twenty or twenty nineteen, twenty twenty. Zoom Info. <laughs> yeah, it was. Apple's uh, privacy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Done. I'm done. You got it. Apple's privacy setting changes is supposedly really impacting Facebook's ability to target. Yeah, and and so it's one of the reasons why the stock has been falling this week, based on what I read. I thought it was uh, the report that came out, like just all this social. That, media. Yeah, that too. It was a yeah. double one. Yeah, all this social media stuff. If one of them, I've I've got 
two daughters. Like all of this shit is toxic. Like I, I don't want any of them. Uh, Reagan is really uh, naturally without hearing me talk about it against TikTok. Like she sees, so she's Reagan's in seventh grade. She sees what her peers, her friends, her girlfriends are doing on TikTok. And she's, she does not approve. And I'm glad because I'll tell you yeah, what, no, yeah. the, the, the toxicity, like if you want to, if you want to read these reports, it, just Google them, like uh, report on Facebook and girls. And there's, there's, I think there's a, a show or a movie on one, one Netflix or something about it as well. Um, there these, is there's a documentary about the adverse effects of social media. Yeah. yeah the, the, what, what it's doing to girls and it, it's awful. Like you, this, all this toxicity, but right now on a, from a business uh, standpoint, there, there's just, there's nothing else. I don't think, in tw- I, I wonder in 20 years if Facebook will exist. I don't think it will. I mean, we'll have to be doing the podcast in 20 years to go, I told you so. <laughs> but um, I, I don't know what else is next. It, but, I, but I do know this. It, I've turned off, like when I first had the opportunity to turn off tracking of the ads in Facebook, I really disliked my Facebook experience because the ads I was getting served up had nothing to do with random, it. yeah. They, well, they they are serving you ads on your interest. So if you're interested in barbecue, you're gonna. You know get, I mean, once you turn it off, once you turn it yeah, off, yeah, once you turn random. it off, yeah, like it was foam and, and like concrete ads. I'm like, I don't, I have no interest in that stuff. And I'm like, but if, if you leave it turned on, I'm gonna get bar fed barbecue ads and 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 other stuff that I'm looking at. And so I turned it back on, like track the hell out of me. I'm okay with this. I want more relevancy. I think that's where the world's gonna go back to. They want more. People are people are not enjoying their Facebook and Facebook. To me, I had this talk. I had this talk with two different people yesterday. Like we were just texting each other. Facebook is the Fox News of social media, but it's also the MSNBC of social media. And people, I believe, are getting pissed off when they come on Facebook when they when they go on Facebook and then they come off and they're leaving just as agitated as when like my dad is watching Fox News. And it's it's because it it, it pisses off uh, liberals and conservatives equally because your you, you, your friends are most likely aren't of all one ill. A hundred percent. And so I, I, you're you're you're, you're so right. Yeah, you're seeing them put out their narrative into the world that you don't agree with, and it's just upsetting you no. and inflaming you. Get a vaccine. Do not get a vaccine. Yeah. This vaccine turned me into a raccoon. You know, like it, yeah. it's just coming from both angles, and and you're like, well, I agree with this, and I don't. It, it's it's too much. I think people are going to turn out Facebook for a while. It'll be interesting to see. I, I wonder, like as I said, I think you could dollar cost average Facebook. There's just no alternative right now. Twitter's worse because Twitter is anonymity, and you can say some heinous things on Twitter. And um, I love Twitter because I highly curate. Like I feel well, you can also do yeah, you can research. I love I love Twitter because I don't have to catch those opinions from my uncle. <laughs> right? My I don't have to see my my sister saying something I disagree with. Like it's anonymous. And the whole the whole point where people are like, we should go back to the days where we don't have any of this social media nonsense. I don't agree with that either. I think that the democratization of information is one of the greatest things to that we have in this country. We wouldn't know the war crimes that were committed by actually killing an Afghan family if it wasn't for social media. We wouldn't know that. And so social media is, uh, in, one, in one frame, Can great. Keep it honest. So. Yeah, and in, 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 in a couple other frames, really bad. I don't, the platform that comes around, right now I think it is YouTube. Like YouTube is videos. YouTube, you, if you want to, if Danny wanted to learn how to knit a, a crochet chair so he could sit in it, it's on YouTube, right? Like it's there. And so I, I, I think Google, GL, sorry, I couldn't type and talk at the same time, is, is the winner here. We'll see. What you got, Alex? Yeah. Um, I wanted to review some of the bonus stocks that we're Woo! currently holding. Hold and, on, um, my friend. Let's not talk vegan cheesesteaks. Let's talk Revere Asset YouTube channel. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Come, come, come. See Alex. 
not move, but drop a maybe video in this weekend. I will post it if you do. <laughs> and here's the thing. His videos are exclusive to YouTube. They're fantastic. They get the most views. And I don't know if it's because he's the best looking of all of us, which no That's offense. That's not at. it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, well, definitively not it. Definitely uh, not it. Definitely not it. Yeah. Like, and, and, and we have that on good authority. I think Don talked to uh, Alex's wife. She agreed. And so <laughs> probably I mean, we do our research here. I assume Don is doing his research. Probably called the source, his wife. She said, no, not good looking. Mercy wedding. You know how it goes. And so, <laughs> so you can only get Alex's videos on YouTube. Okay. And the yep. only way you're going to know the moment, like when Alex drops that video at 1159 Mountain yeah, they're Time. Yeah, ti they're timely. They're timely. Which nobody knows when 1159 a, Mountain Time is. You have to hit the bell. I I, yeah. It, I'm not going to just put out a video just to put out a video. They, they, um, I try to get you try to put out the best stocks that are leading and you can be um, okay with this work and they move you when something moves you internally. Yeah. That's when I it, think that's it, fair. <laughs> um, anyways, it's not a so mercy stock. Up, they move you. So uh, if you could pull up net, <clears throat> cause it's actually down today and I wanted to spot something out, uh, show something on the, so the daily, I'm going to pull up the daily. Actually yeah, the daily first. Then I was going to go. So, it's gapped down to the 21 EMA and it had yesterday it gapped down, but then it came back pretty strongly. And then today there was a, uh, a downgrade, but I'm thinking that the retail are, are getting shaken out if they bought late up here. Um, oh, at 137. Yeah. If you could pull up the weekly chart actually, cause this is what I ended up stepping back and it's holding its 10 week moving average. And it's right around where the 21 EMA on the daily is. It's funny. They're, they coincide with each other. This is my area, my line in the sand now. I have raised my stops. So on those leaps that we were in at 2150, um, it is no longer a minus 20% stop. Minimize that to a 0% or at your cost is where I want you to raise your stop. So now, no matter what, you cannot lose any money on the trade. This is where... It could potentially turn into a nice winner and see what those leaps can do for you. The other um, oh, three stocks. Can, can I pause there for one second? Look, if, you, mm -hmm. if, if someone is like, I'd like to learn what Alex just said. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think it's helpful when someone's like, we've done it too. Like, hey, if you don't know what he just said, don't do it. Like that. Look, if you yeah. would like to understand what Alex just said, Alex would love to talk to you. Alex yeah. at Revere Asset is the, one of the easiest ways to get a hold of him. And yep. he will walk the dog with you. He'll set up, he, he can even set up a special meeting with you. We have tools and technology, like Zooms that hunters never had. And so, right. uh, <laughs> and so let Alex Absolutely. explain it to you. Uh, and, and that's because how options we, can get complicated. And I don't want people to be confused out there with how uh, the bonus stock position, how that yes. one is. Because it's not a traditional, uh, just buy a stock and, set a stop. Um, anyways, the other three is, we could just go through these quickly. I'm just holding these is team T A A T E A M. Ah, Sounds done like, great. Like is, isn't Danny a good teammate? There I you go. Know. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> the other one is a cybersecurity stock P A N W Palo Alto. That one's a hold. I'm not, I'm not touching that one. Mm -hmm. And the new one that we went over last week, that's been really volatile. Uh, is a firm. Hold on. I, I, I froze up uh, the uh, Quotron machine here. No, you're good. There we go. We'll get this on a daily. This one uh, on the weekly looks good too, but the daily, there's some big volume bars that are coming into the stock. I'm super bullish on this name. It reminds me of Upstart when Upstart started to go a couple months ago. It, went, it gapped up on earnings, and then it just rode that ADMA all the way up. I, I, this reminds me of that type of stock. It could, like I said in the video, it, it can it potentially be a super winner. And those January one fifties that we're in, that we were getting in at ten ninety, off the top of my head, they're at like thirteen something. So they're up a little bit. I uh, haven't trimmed any yet. It, it, it's tough. This is a, this is not going to be easy. There's going to be days where this is going to be down, and you're going to want to sell it. But just follow your stops. 
I'm using that eight EMA, eight exponential moving average as my line in the sand because of how fast this stock is. Um, yeah, you can see right there, it, it's it's trailing behind it. This is, uh, I, like I said, I really like this name. Uh, one stock that's not a bonus stock, it's on my watch list. And I want the viewers to look at it because it is an IPO and I know you'll like this one, Tim. It's Dutch Brothers, B oh. Bros, B-R-O-S. What a ticker. Now this, this company is only in 11 states, okay? They're here in Arizona, and since college, I've my wife and I have been drinking this coffee. We love the place. The drive-through is always slammed. I mean, cars out the to the street even during COVID. It reminds me of like I don't want to say Starbucks. Is I, I think it reminds me more of Chipotle in the sense that when Chipotle came out, they had Mexican food. I was like, we already have plenty of Mexican food. Like, how are they going to? What is differentiating them from? Taco Bell. Well, this kind of reminds me of that, but in the coffee space where it becomes like a cult following and you're just going to want Dutch brothers every day. It's, it's addicting. When I have my family from Long Island and New York and New Jersey come out, they're like, let's go to Dutch brothers. So I just reminds me of that. I don't know if there's a place for, to buy it here. You kind of want to wait for it to set up a base. And when I say base, let it consolidate, let it establish itself for a little while, a month to two months. And then maybe look into getting it. But right now, I do want the viewers to add this on your watch list. Just just follow the stock. And just and that's just, it for me. And just notice, Dutch Brothers is the love. It's not on the most hated list. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah, Don. Don, Don, Don. Take, take, take us home here. Home stretch here. So mon uh, Monday, we had the big gap down on the Evergreen Cajun beers. And uh, Monday and Tuesday, Hunter and I stressed in our videos while we did get stopped out on a couple of things, we were also looking to isolate strength. Uh, and we gave uh, quite a few names in there if you want to re go back and review those. But let's talk about a healthy pullback that found support versus a non-healthy pullback that is a sell. First of all, bring up uh, something that did what it was supposed to do, NVIDIA, NVDA. Initially gapped down uh, Monday with basically just about every other stock in the market. Uh, but found support right where it should have at, had at its 50-day moving average, and then showed follow-through strength close to the top of its range on Monday, follows through strength uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, get back above its 21, and now it's just pulling back today to its tw This is what you want it uh, to act like. This is what you would want a stock to act like on a pullback. Uh, compare that with DraftKings, DKNG, which we also held coming into the week. They announced uh, an acquisition that was not received well at all by the market. Gap down with the market on Monday, held at your blue line there, which is the 34, is that correct? That's correct. So broke the 21, held the 34, but then Tuesday, uh, while all other growth stocks that uh, were acting well reclaimed Monday's highs and headed back toward their more recent highs, this one broke down on heavy volumes. So the acquisition was not well received at all by and it's continued lower over the last uh, four days. This is a breakdown, and this is uh, this is a not. We sold it basically on Tuesday. We got out of it. Actually, we got out of it on Monday. This is interesting um, because uh, this whole space is. I want to ask Connor about this too. P E N. Like the the amount of money it must be taking to acquire customers, even though Penn doesn't spend that much money on advertising per se, because they've got Dave Portnoy and the whole Barstool crew, like. It's got to be the reason why these stocks are not doing well. It's got to be an expense thing. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that, Don or Hunter? I do. Um, I, I mean, there is, you know, severe competition. Um, and granted, I think there's a misunderstanding on DraftKings and how they make their money. And I've gone over it on the on the podcast before. Um, they're not necessarily like a casino. It's like the they have a guaranteed amount of money they make off of every single fantasy tournament. Now the sports book is just that. It's a sports book. That's a little bit different where they, you know, you're betting against the house or you know, the house always wins, that kind of thing. But the fantasy lineups, there's no variation um or no, you know, it's it they make what they're gonna make on every single tournament and they know what they're gonna make before it's ever even completed. Um the issue is getting those customers to come back and spend money 
Um, and from the revenue growth, we see that DraftKings is doing that. It's just a matter of how can they turn it into profitability. And I think that's why they tried to buy Intane. And mm-hmm. this is another thing uh, on DraftKings. I've seen this before with other stocks uh, that gap down on a potential acquisition. We could find out a week from now that Intane has rejected the offer and this was essentially all for nothing. Yep. It's just something to keep in mind. Uh, nothing has been finalized yet. This is a reaction to the proposal. If Intane rejects it, uh, then we'll see what happens with, with DraftKings after that. But Intane is profitable. They actually generate income. And I think that might be part of the reason they're going after them. They also generate, I think, like three or four billion in revenue per year, um, or at least last year. But I, I think the profitability component of this foreign company is what's enticing in the international presence. Time will tell if uh, if this ends up working out for DraftKings. It's a pretty bold offer uh, considering the size of the company itself uh, relative to DraftKings. And then just to add further fuel to the fire, Hedgeye came out, I think, yesterday and put out a short report essentially saying they think DraftKings has another 25 to 50% downside from where it currently sits. Oh, wow. So all that to say, there's quite a bit of negativity surrounding the stock. It's become quite a divisive stock as well. Uh, and it's, I mean, not looking great. So it's, it's going to take a severe change in character. The one thing I would say is volume has dried up on it a little bit. Uh, and if, if it is going to start to act right, you would expect it to hopefully start to turn around now. Uh, but for the time yeah, it's being, at, it's at a support looking to the left of the chart. It's at a, a support area here if, if you're still holding it. But we don't um, we don't look at the long term story and take short term or intermediate term pain in stocks. When something uh, breaks our key moving averages, we just get out of the way and move on. Yeah, uh, to you can always else. buy it back. Yep. You know, if it and that's exactly. what I, I've got an alert set at 55. That gets it pretty much back above the 200 and a lot of those moving averages. If, DraftKings can get back through 55, 56 with volume. It'll get back on my radar and get my attention. All right. What else you got, Don? Well, after I finish my tea steak, DraftKings will be coming off of the 21 over 21. <laughs> Tune, in tonight. Tune in tonight to find out uh, what its replacement is. And to do that, all you do is go to dailymarketinsight.com. You can find all of our videos. We never pull them down, whether right, wrong, or indifferent. We're not looking to be right or wrong. We're looking to show you what we believe is going to happen the next day, what, what the trend is looking like, and what actions we're going to be taking. Find all of that at dailymarketinsight.com. And then is it tomorrow's all you insights today. Yep. Is that all you had, Don? Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you, you mentioned we're going to tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. We're not necessarily going to do that. We're going to set an expectation for what the market is doing right now. And if that expectation is broken, we're going to uh, vary our current outlook and react accordingly. So really it's probabilities, it's probabilities, pl- probabilities. It's yep. a plan, observe, interpret, react is. Oh, that is sounds like an acronym in the making. Plan, observe. What <laughs> Let's was see. It? Per, pre, Priya. Plan. <laughs> plan. P-O, plan, observe, interpret, react. P-O-I-R. There you go. Priya. Priya. All right. Uh, by the way, uh, interesting that I, I don't see it, but ESPN reportedly is is looking for three to four billion dollars to license their name to a sports book. Is that right, Hunter? I, I saw some headline about that, but I didn't fully understand what they were trying to do. ESPN and I think, is I think they it. might even have some exposure or ownership of DraftKings. I'm not sure. They missed the boat. Like ESPN is like they 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 had. I mean, the world well, Disney. Own? Yeah, they do. I was just like, yeah, yeah, Disney, yeah, 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 like. Yeah. What a what a missed opportunity! I, I, who looks at ESPN and goes, "Oh, those guys know what they're doing about sports and gambling." <laughs> I don't think so. I don't. I, I don't think that that exists. I could be wrong, but that's my perception, which could be misguided. Anyway, Daniel. <laughs> All right, folks. If you like what you heard, please tell a friend, tell a neighbor. Just send them to revereasset.com dot com and tell them to sign up for our daily market insights, and they'll also get this podcast delivered right in their inbox. We won't spam them or reach out to them in any way. It's up to them to reach out to us for a complimentary portfolio to review, ask about any stock they may already own or topics they'd like to hear on the radio, um, or if they want to become a client and they like what we're doing. You can always email us, dan at revereasset.com, don at revereasset, tim, hunter, or alex at revereasset.com. And you can always call us old school at 855 
real wealth. Just one last thing, which I didn't tell people was one last thing. So if you waited through the credits like a Marvel movie, kudos to you. <laughs> um, HD. So these are really interesting charts to me. So I talked about Home Depot a couple of weeks ago. Like these, these charts, like we talked about Chipotle, Home Depot, they really haven't broken down. And I find that uh, fascinating. Uh, Alex had some great charts. The team has, like, there's some really good stocks out in this market, even though there's a bunch of negativity pervading. If you listen to Pundancy, uh, some really good looking charts, like Home Depot is not a secret type of stock. People that might not know team or they might not know like line, or, but, but but they know, they know Home Depot and that, that chart looks super nice. We talked about Square. The other day, I like this chart of square it held. Uh, they talked about it on Wednesday. And so you had to move up on uh, Thursday and then uh, back a little bit, but at support. I like that chart of uh, square. And then the last one here is Tesla. So uh, look at that. That's what they call bullish, bullish charts. So super interesting. We'll talk to you next week on your money.